This is task 3a part 2 where you're asked to create a data dictionary design for instructors and learners. You're asked to show the field names. So we've got a table for the field names, the data types you asked for, the field lengths and validation rules. So what we are going to do is fill in a table like this. First of all, every table must have a primary key. Primary keys, I recommend you always use the name of the table and then put in the word ID afterwards. Even if you've got something else that you think could be a primary key, use this separate ID field every time you want a primary key. The data type, well, if we set this up as an auto number, then it will be a long integer. Auto number is just something that Microsoft Access uses. The actual data type is a long integer. The length, well, we're not sure how many characters we're going to need, but we know that we're going to need at least four digits, really, to, well, maybe not even that, two digits, if we would like to have 11, 12 instructors. If we became global, you know, or even a national company, we might need more. We'll just go with four digits. And then we're going to come up with the validation rule. We'll do that later, but let's move on to the other fields. Now, for the other fields, we're actually told in the question what data is needed. For example, if we look here, it says that the name is required. Now, a name on its own is not atomic. For example, my name is Paul Long. That consists of two items of data. It consists of my forename and my surname. If we carry on and have a look at what else is required, date of birth, gender, job title. So let's put those in. So date of birth, gender, job title. And let's carry on reading. In addition, they need to know the hourly rate the instructor charges. So hourly rate, okay, or charge, I'm going to call it. The maximum number of hours they are willing to work with a single learner. Okay, so if we were to look at that, that's it per week. Uh, so we'll go for max hours. And they also want to know whether or not they're willing to work at weekends. Finally, we're told that they would also like to see a photograph of each instructor. So we need another field called photograph. Now we need to think about the data types. Well, forename and surname are quite straightforward. They're text. Date of birth is obviously a date. Gender, well, if you think of the data that we're going to store now, it's either going to be male or female or M or F. So that is also text, as is job title. Our charge, however, well, depending on how we choose to do this, we could put currency, although that really is a format of data. So it's probably going to be real because it's going to include decimals. Our maximum number of hours, however, is not going to be done in halves. That's going to be full hours. So we'll have an integer. Whether or not they work weekends is yes or no. Whenever we have a yes or no, that is a Boolean value. Notice that gender wasn't Boolean. Although we only have M or F, you can't say uh, what's their gender, yes or no, you could say, is the person male, yes or no, but then that would be a different field. Finally, we've got their photograph, which is going to be a picture. Now we need to look at the lengths. Well, in general, it's accepted that 20, 25 is quite reasonable for uh, a forename or a surname. When it comes to a date of birth, we could like put here like short date, for example, but it doesn't really matter because it's always going to be stored um, as a date with uh, two, two and four digits. Gender, well, it's only going to be male or female, so that's M or F, so we'll just store one. Job title, well, senior instructor, S-E-N-I-O-R space I-N-S-T-R-U-C-T-O-R makes 17 characters so we need at least 17 maybe more 
Um, but our database will cope with 17 for now. Our charge, we know is going to be a decimal. Um, how much are we like to charge? It's not going to be more than £100, as well, or £99, so we'll stick with that. We will need two decimal places. Maximum number of hours? Well, I suppose an instructor might be willing to do 10, 11, 12 hours per week, so we'll go for two digits there. This can only be yes or no weekends, so it's got to be a single digit. The photograph, okay, well, that's going to be a picture. We could write this down as pixels or centimetres, but I'm going to go for uh, a physical size of 15 kilobytes. We now need to put our validation rules in. Well, it's absolutely critical that our primary key, the instructor ID, exists. So we'll have a presence check. We can't say much about it, so I've got to be there or not. It's also important that if we put a record in for an instructor, we've got to have some data in there. We need at least a, a surname. So I'm going to put a presence check there. Now, I'm not going to get any marks for this because I'm told that I need four different validation checks. That's not different to the one above. It's the same. However, it's worth putting in because let's say I hadn't done that one very well. I've got another option here. Our date of birth. Well, our date of birth has got to be before today. But as well as that, an instructor has got to be at least 21 years old. So what I'm going to put is it's got to be before today minus 21 years. Our gender, the instructor's either got to be male or female. So this is a lookup in list check. It's looking up in the list of male or female. The one before was a range check because it's got to be within the range of before 21 years ago. I'm going to put another range in there just in case uh, I'm not allowed that one. So our charge has got to be bigger than zero. Our maximum hours has got to be bigger than zero. We can't have an instructor who's not willing to do any hours. And our weekends. Well, we know it's Boolean, so it can only be yes or no, but we might as well put that in as a yes or no option. So that's the instructor table finished. I'm assuming that you're going to be okay working out the learner table because you're not actually given any fields, so you've got to decide what fields you're going to put in there yourself. And then you've got to come up with um, some validation rules. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a table for the learner. Uh, so this is my design. I'm going to label it learner, and I should of course la have labeled the first one instructor. And I'm going to put in this table, and we're just going to have a look at this one validation rule, or two validation rules here. First of all, we're going to have what's called a picture check, or a format check. That is to say that a telephone number can only contain numbers and spaces. So that's not the same as a data type saying it can be a number or it can be text. We're saying it cannot have any letters in it. It can only have numbers and spaces. So that is the way it's formatted. It's a format check. And I've put here a license number. Okay, this is a license number for a learner. It could be used as a primary um, key, but remember what I said. We'll always just use an auto number, which is going to be the table name followed by ID. This is just so we don't get any problems with the structure of our database later. If I use license number, and let's say they ran out of license numbers in the country and the format changed, I'd have to change the format of my primary key, and that can cause all sorts of problems. So this is another picture check saying it must follow this pattern of letters, numbers, letters, number, two letters. Now if we have a look at overall, I've got four presence checks, only one of those can be marked right. I've got one, two, three range checks, one of those can be marked as correct. I've got one, two, three lookup in list checks, so again one of those can be marked correct. So, so far that is three different types of check. Presence, range, look up in list. I need one more type of check. Well, I've got my picture checks here. So one of those can be marked as correct, giving us four marks in total. Notice that I've been specific. I haven't just said look up in list. I've said what needs to go there. So that's our design done. Now you'll be able to move on to producing your database. 
You may need to come back to this design and adapt it because your database may change and therefore you may want to change the way that your database is designed.